Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net and this is the solution video to the laborious layout challenge. Recall there's no one right way to do this. Uh, make sure that you're not cheating. You should actually crack open Visual Studio and write some code before you get into this video. If you don't, shame on you. Okay, let's get started uh, with the new project and we're going to call this laborious layout. take a look at the image while well, that's getting set up here keep this handy um, the way that I see this let's get that little top area out of the way uh, is that we have three grids each of these grids are almost identical except they have a different title and the colors of these rectangles are the same I also can see that there are essentially three rows and so I'm looking at this like a grid and yet they're arrayed with you know, some respect to uh, some stacking. So I'm going to enclose the entire area with a stack panel and create a grid, get it to look right, and then copy and paste it twice and change up the colors in the title, and we should be done. Add some add some margins between each of the grids, and then we should be done. Okay, so let's get started. And open up mainpage.xaml. Here again, my recommendation would be to use this 13.3 uh, inch desktop. Let's change that to 100 so we can kind of at least kind of see it. Move this over here to the right. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a stack panel, like I said. And inside of that, we're gonna create a grid. And uh, if you recall, the grid had three rows and two columns. So let's go uh, grid.row definitions. And then below that I'll do grid.column definitions. All right, and in the row definitions, let's go row definition, copy and paste that twice. So we have three rows and then we're gonna create two uh, column definitions. One of the requirements was that the width of this only be 500. So let's go ahead and set that. I'm gonna leave the row definition set uh, to their default value of auto. I'm not gonna set that, but the column definitions, uh, we didn't really talk about this, but I'm gonna set them equal to one and two star sizings, like so. That should give us the desired effect of you can kind of see if you split this into thirds, you have this title area as a third, and then the the uh, the, the content area as two thirds. Okay. All right. Next up, uh, let's go ahead and start adding the text blocks. There's going to be two of them. The one is going to be for the title. So we'll go title one, and we know the font size, and that's going to be 24 equals 24, and it's going to be in the first column in the first row, so we'll just leave the defaults there. Here in the second text block, however, we're gonna grab some lorem ipsum text. We just need that first paragraph. Let's copy that, go back to our project. I'll paste it in right there. And this needs to be in grid dot, whoops. Uh, grid, whoops. Yeah, I'm outside the boundary here. Sorry about that. Let me grab both of these guys and put them inside the grid. When you're fighting IntelliSense, in other words, when IntelliSense is not giving you what you think, you may not be in the right place. I've learned that the hard way. I'll set grid.row equals one and grid.column equals one. Great. All right, next up, stack panel. Uh, so this is going to be that little area below it. Do we need that? Uh, yes, we do. We need it because we want it um, to be oriented horizontally. Then we need rectangles. We'll need three of them. In fact, let me just go ahead and do this. Fill equals whatever. And then the, uh, the width will be 100. Height. 30. Okay. And 
the stack panel will be in a grid dot row two grid dot column one. All right, let's see what we have so far. Not much because we don't see some things. First of all, we need to turn on the uh, text wrapping. Equals wrap. And then let's set the, the fills on this one, this first one, to green, black, and I believe red. All right, I know I have some margin issues, but I think we're on the right path there. Let's see what margin issues we have. There's no margin there. We don't need any margin here. So the only margins really along um, along the left-hand side, which looks to be about 20, and then the amount of space between the end of one of these grids and the beginning of the other one. So uh, let us put the stack panels margin uh, equal 20, 0, 0, 0. And then we'll put uh, at the end of the grid, actually, yeah, the grid margin, 0, 0, 0, 20. Okay, that should do it. Okay, great. All right, so the hard part's over. Now let's do this. Let's just grab the grid, the whole grid. I'm going to paste it twice in this stack panel. All right, for the second version of our little grid here, we'll title two. And uh, let's look at the picture here. Red, black, blue. Red, black, blue. And then this would, next one would be title three. And this would be blue, black, and yellow. And before we run it, let me just go over here to the app.xaml.cs, get rid of the frame counter. Gone. And let's run it. See how close we got here. Okay, almost right. You see the issue here? We are centered and I wanna be left aligned. So let's fix that. And I often say that when you write code, it's more like molding clay than chiseling stone. So don't be afraid to mold and shape your applications into place. Work on them, run them, study them, change them, and repeat the process. So uh, here we want to do the horizontal alignment equals left, and that should fix that issue. Let's see. Yeah. I think that's the solution. It runs off to the bottom of the screen. We'll fix that someday with a whole different control that'll give us a scroll bar. But uh, that's a solution. That's one solution. Hopefully you got it or got some version of this. And if not, come back to it tomorrow. Uh, so that's it. Now let's move on. Uh, I think you're ready for what comes next. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.